sharks and fight for ocean health. And it's all about health right now. We know about COVID, of course, and about how human impacts and also our interactions with wildlife can come back and bite us. So our, uh, our byline these days is uh, vaccinate, wear your mask, keep your distance and leave wildlife in the wild. So we're, this, we're, here, we're here to talk about art, not sharks, but sharks too. So this is uh, the third event that we started this program or Pamela started this program about four years, four years ago, last year. Uh, and we've got, I think, eight artists. We're going to show our Instagram. At the, the platform is on Instagram and uh, it's growing and you can see art, you can buy art. And if you're an artist, you can join us sharing your work, uh, sharing your love for sharks in the ocean and uh, hopefully having fun because we like to have fun too. So I want to just do a mini presentation. If you want to tune in to our lectures, uh, go to sharksewers.org. We do a lot of webinars, not webinars. We try to have fun and I like to make it interactive. But we are a, a nonprofit that does very serious work in a very serious issues. And that is the crisis facing our ocean faced uh, by many factors, overfishing, climate change, ocean acidification, plastics. I know you're gonna start sliding under your seat, but we also, uh, use the power of youth, we use the power of, of the ocean, the power of sharks, the power of art to, to live, to, to live well, to live healthy, to have fun and to do good. So we use education and, and events like this, ideally live events with people are like our Sharktoberfest, like our World Oceans Day to engage people, to get out, clean the beach, do something fun, do something good for wildlife in the oceans. And we try to apply that energy towards advocacy and conservation policy. So we try to get politicians, uh, I wanna, don't wanna say off their ass, but we try to inspire politicians to actually do something and write laws for the ocean and protecting sharks. We remind them that there's the other 71% out there that we need to take care of not just the dirt part of planet Earth. Um, so we have Kevin Mursky with us, uh, uh, the single fin theory on Instagram. He also has a website that we'll share with you, but we're gonna talk about art, what inspires his art, his muse, surfing, skating. There's also a lot of uh, wildlife in his art and kind of crazy, whimsical, fun, uh, creative, uh, views towards the ocean. And Kevin's gonna share with us some of his work a little bit later with Pamela, uh, because there's a lot we need to do. In the past 50 years, we've killed most of our sharks. Over 71% of shark and ray populations are now out of the ocean. That means we have 29% left, that 25% of those species are threatened with extinction. So that we have a lot to do because the ocean is our mother, we rely on it. Uh, we, we get our, our oxygen from the ocean. She's our lungs, she's our liver, she's our kidneys. Uh, sometimes she's our refrigerator and too often she is our uh, waste pet. So there's a lot we need to do to protect the ocean because there are more species to be described than we know that are there. We're losing them at a faster rate than we can save them. Uh, and it also mitigates climate change and is the regulator of our weather. You can't get away from the ocean, even if you live, if you're a Tibetan monk, you're probably not even listening to this on the internet, good for you, you're meditating your navel, but you're still breathing, you're still being influenced by the ocean. Colorado, no matter where you are, we rely on the oceans for our recreation, for our commerce, for our air, and three billion people rely on the ocean for their protein. So that big blue planet, is 90% of habitable space for life, not just us, but all of those other amazing animals, including sharks. The goal is to protect 30% by 2030, and we only have six and a half percent protected under marine protected areas. That's a lot of the work that Shark Stewards has done here in California, where we now have around 30% of our ocean protected under our marine protected areas in the state, under our national marine sanctuaries, but other places in the world, like where we work across that great Pacific in the Coral Triangle need more protection for biodiversity because of 
overfishing because of the shark fin trade, because of loss of habitat, we're losing these species. And these enigmatic charismatic species are more important to the ocean than we realize. And we are seeing the impacts, especially when we remove them. So sharks are like the roof of the house. They're also like the floor of the house. They're also the walls of the house. They maintain the structure of the ecosystem. So you take the roof off, the rain comes in and the walls fall down. The floor warps. Um, if you have a flood, we need those apex predators, but we also need the meso predators, the middle sharks, to maintain the trophic integrity of all of those other fish and the coral reefs or the eelgrass beds or the, the giant macrocystis or kelp beds off of California. So saving sharks maintains biodiversity, abundance, and the health of the ocean that we rely on. So you can have these incredible coral reef ecosystems with no disease, with all kinds of fish and species, with large concentrations of marine megafauna, from sharks to sea turtles to dugongs. So we inspire youth to inspire politicians, including the Canadian Shark Fin Ban with my student Alice Jo here, but also we reintroduce the federal shark fin ban, uh, ban, the Shark Fin Sales Elimination Act, this is the fourth introduction into the Congress. Please, people, let's pass this so we can focus on Asia, where most of those shark fins are going. Uh, this was just reintroduced by Representative Sablan and Capito that it's a bipartisan bill to ban the sale of shark fins throughout the US. We have 14 states from Hawaii to Florida, but we have 36 other states that can sell it. And then we also have a flow through of shark fins that are imported legally and exported. Um, we try to inspire kids of the things that you can do at home. Uh, sometimes it's just pick up a piece of plastic or use less, share your story or create art. But most of all, I think we need to connect with each other across all cultures, across all oceans. This means respect in Chinese. We need to respect each other, especially during uh, Asian Pacific Islanders Heritage Month, which it is now, there has been an increase in violence against our Asian Americans. These are our people, our team of uh, board members, of volunteers, including our Chinese chapter in China here, uh, Darcy Lu Dan, who's a professional surfer and advocate for sharks. So let's respect each other, respect the ocean, and work together to save it. Join us on uh, Endangered Species Day, May 21st and participate on a, partic uh, on a panel of experts with action on how you can save these endangered marine megafauna from whale sharks to sea turtles to dugongs to manta rays. So follow us on all this biz, social media. You can actually come to a beach cleanup and see us in person. We're starting to do beach cleanups now in Southern California, in Northern California, and where you live if you'd like to start a chapter of Shark Stewards. Um, if you're on uh, WeChat or Weibo in China, I'm not speaking Chinese, but we do have information in Chinese and we're trying to reach across the Pacific to educate youth to save sharks. So thanks for listening. Uh, sharks need likes. That's this really cool video. Or, I mean, an uh, image by Kevin Mursky. Now I want to readmit Kevin back into the Zoom room. I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna introduce our board member. Well, first I'll say, I'm gonna introduce uh, Justin Love, who is our uh, volunteer coordinator because we have several active campaigns that you can participate on uh, wherever you live. We are international. And Justin, just wanna say hi, thanks for tuning in from North Carolina. And uh, if you, if you wanna point some people towards some of our programs and how they might help. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so volunteers are absolutely critical for our success. Um, they always have been and they always will be. Um, so we really appreciate the hard work that our volunteers put in. Um, a lot of people across many different time zones um, donate their time and effort and energies and money um, towards our mission of, uh, you know, helping save sharks and the vision of a more healthy ocean. Um, so, you know, we have a phenomenal group of shark lovers and just awesome people, you know, even if you don't have a background in marine biology or, or shark education or anything like that, we can still use your help. Um, you know, we have a lot of different positions that we're looking to fill 
Um, and those include, you know, social media. We need people to help with um, social media posts, with content creation. Um, one of the things we're really hitting on is um, blog writing. You know, if you have anything that you feel like you want to tell our audience, um, you know, regarding conservational efforts or um, mitigating the um, damages of plastic, uh, we would love to have your writing and just, just share your writing with our audience and, you know, our um, donors and volunteers. Um, so, you know, no, no matter where you are, no matter where you live, we can definitely use your help. You know, if you're a graphic designer or, um, you know, you have some sort of skill set, feel free to reach out to either David or myself or, you know, go on our website. It's sharkstewards.org slash volunteer. Um, you can find all of our different opportunities there. We even have a survey um, that you can fill out with your interests and uh, just let us know what you want to do. You know, no matter what your skill set is, we can definitely find a place for you. So we really appreciate your help. Great, thank you. And we do have hundreds of volunteers internationally from China to Canada. Uh, we work mostly in the Pacific, but we have some friends over in the EU where there's now a shark finning ban going on. Kevin's back with us. Yeah, um, sorry, I had a little Justin. power outage here. <laughs> I'm glad you're back. Another. I'll make you co-host as we're talking. And now I'd like to introduce my friend and board member, Pamela Comstock from Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha. I wanted to introduce to everybody, um, to you guys and to the world. This is a new member of Shark Shorts. This is Beth. Hello, aloha. aloha. She has um, recently learned about Shark Stewards and I kind of reeled her in and I invited her to come sit with us and take part and she's loving every moment of it. So. <laughs> Welcome, Beth, and she's going to help me with events and uh, all the fun things we plan to do here in Hawaii when the pandemic is a little bit, is completely under control, I should say. Um, so she's going to sit with me while I tell you a little bit about Art, art for Sharks, and then I'm going to introduce Kevin, and then um, we'll wrap it up back again with David. So I think David is going to share the screen, and he's going to show a little bit of imagery about Art for Sharks. And I will go ahead and tell you about Art for Sharks for those of you who aren't aware of what Art for Sharks is. Um, Art for Sharks is the art admirer side of protecting sharks. It was a program put together by shark stewards whose mission is to restore ocean health by saving sharks. Um, I'm gonna um, kind of read a little bit of our, our, our mission statement because I always have to remind myself exactly what we do at Shark Stewards, even though I, it's ingrained in my brain, I'd like to tell you and um, remind myself how important it is to have Shark Stewards in our lives. Um, our mission states that shark species are going extinct um, and over 90 million sharks and rays were killed for their, fi their fins and meat last year. Many species like scalloped hammerhead sharks have disappeared from 99% of their former range and are critically endangered. In the past 50 years, over, overfishing has erased 71% of all sharks and rays from the ocean. We are losing these important species before we can even learn their biology. Art for Sharks was born in 2020 during the worldwide pandemic. We needed a way to share news and creativity. We, we are able to celebrate and educate our efforts in restoring ocean health through art. Last October, we opened our Instagram post with a blast of handful, uh, a blast of a handful of select artists that we were very proud to share. Each artist contributes his or her artwork and 25% of their sales is contributed to our mission at Shark Stewards. We continue to add new artists each month along with stories of their art with sharks imagery or water imagery. We will be featuring a special with kids and their drawings in coordination with David McGuire's our founder, in coordination with his new book, uh, Sharks for Kids. Not sure if you're aware of David's book, but it has completely inspired my best friend, um, Buffy, who is Miss Whiteman. And she has doing, she's doing a whole program of drawings for kids in her classroom. And I, we're gonna do we're gonna do an interview with her um, probably in July or August. It's gonna be very exciting. Um, 
but we also plan to have events and share the news through art. We will also continue to have the interviews with artists um, year round. Today, we're gonna welcome Kevin Mursky. Um, he's based in Marin County. Um, he's a dear, dear friend of mine and he's so talented and we are so honored to have him part of our team. So I'm gonna turn it over to Kevin. He's gonna take over the screen and he's gonna talk about his art um, and what inspires him. Hi, Kevin. Hi, okay. I have had nothing but technical trouble and I apologize to all. Um, <laughs> I'm now on my phone and I think the phone is gonna allow me to share a slideshow that I created for this event easier than the computer was. So bear with me here. Okay, I'm gonna stop um, sharing your co-host. We should be able yeah. to share. Can you guys um, see any of that? We see your art behind you. I see a fin <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, you, is that sharing? You your work is inspired by your actions. Okay, we're seeing yeah. a, a, a towboat with a giant ship. Okay, could mean that we're getting somewhere. Um, let's see here. Why is it not? Uh, darn it. Um, um, I'm just going to move you over a little bit. How's that? You guys um, might have to do the, the art presentation here. I apologize. Um, too many technical difficulties in one afternoon. Yeah, it's OK. I, I, yeah, I'm not able to advance you. So why don't yeah, we just go to your Instagram page, Kevin, because um, there's a lot of really cool art on the Art for Shark page on Instagram. And it's called the yeah. Single Fin Theory. Yeah, I'll just, um, in the interest of, of not fumbling through this anymore, um, I will just um, kind of speak to, to what I do. And, and first of all, I'm really appreciative of the opportunity to contribute to what you all are doing. Um, it's important to me, marine life, the natural world, our environment um, is something that I grew up with. It's something that's beholden to me. Um, thanks for pulling up the website. Um, and um, I'll, I wanted to start with telling a, a quick funny story about um, a shark. So I was uh, raised for a period of time when I was a kid, I lived on a sailboat in Sausalito in the Sausalito Yacht Harbor in the late 1970s early 80s. And um, during that time, uh, one summer, uh, some friends of mine and I discovered that we figured out a way to climb up on an old sort of scaffolding that was out in the in the bay water. It was the former slip for the ferry boat that would come from San Francisco to Sausalito every day. Um, they had built a new one out of, out of steel. Um, the old one was this relic made out of old wood pilings. And we, we figured out we could swim out there, climb up and jump off. And um, that was entertainment enough for us. And I had left my baseball cap on the sidewalk uh, because I didn't want it to fall off and sink in the water. So we did this for about a half hour to a little bit more. And if anyone knows Sausalito, California, it's a big tourist town. And while we were jumping off, all these tourists gathered around. And unbeknownst to me, started putting money in the hat. They thought we were like an act. Well, we were doing pretty well um, with the money. Uh, but then out of nowhere, a um, leopard shark came swimming uh, sort of over to where we were. And it was probably four or five feet long. So it was not super small, um, but we were uh, well versed in all things sharks and understood the leopard shark was not really a threat. Um, they're beautiful if you've ever seen them. Um, this particular shark was really friendly and kept following us around and around and around to the point where I was not sure it wasn't chasing me, but I didn't want to let on. And we swam with it for another 30, 40 minutes. And when we got, when it finally swam away and we got back up on the beach, um, we had close to $500 in the hat. So um, that was incredible. I think I was in eighth grade when that happened. So I have a debt to pay to, to <laughs> sharks. Um, I've also been surfing in Northern California for over 40 years and have never had a negative shark encounter. So I also have that debt of gratitude um, to sharks. So I'm happy to help, happy to lend a hand. Um, I guess as far as my art is concerned, um, what I would say is um, 
my art is really my expression. It's uh, insight into what I'm thinking about at any given time, uh, mood, um, editorializing. Um, it's simplistic, but it's meant to have some depth and ask some questions in certain, certain areas, um, some less so than others. A lot of my characters, um, like the skateboarder guy there, um, would be one example, um, can appear uh, pensive or dour. Um, and that's because that's, um, I, I get a little bit more personal satisfaction out of the depth of uh, what people are thinking about and doing and maybe not knowing what they're thinking about um, and sort of creating some opaqueness around, around each character. So um, you'll see a lot of that in my work. Um, I do my work mainly with uh, pens, pencils. I also draw on an iPad um, frequently and, and then print. And um, you can see here was a show that um, we had at the Great Highway Gallery in San Francisco back before COVID um, with some of the art on the wall. Um, one of the themes that uh, repeats itself in the work is people with big masks or glasses that you can't see through. And I'm frankly not sure where that came from, but if uh, I were to ask a therapist, it would probably be something to the effect of, um, I was born just about legally blind and I uh, can't see a thing. And um, I like the idea of, of just not being able to know. To me, it, it, gives, um, it gives a vulnerability and a sense again of, of you as the viewer have to kind of um, sort of figure out what you think the, the character or the animal or whomever is, is actually thinking um, by not sort of, um, you know, there's my, screensaver there you can see an example of someone with a mask whose uh, face you can't see so that's uh, an area of interest for me I've been doing a lot of birds lately during COVID we spend a lot of time at the lakes that are nearby our home and um, the amount of wildlife that's kind of flourished during this time of limited people being in their domain has been pretty incredible and um, I'm, I'm slowly becoming a bird nerd and uh, I don't have a walker yet or a telescope, but uh, I'm definitely out there enjoying the birds. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of uh, that's kind of me. Um, I I sell my work uh, in print uh, on my website. I have shows. I have had done a lot of collaborations with um, you know brands and surf shops and people like that, um, which has been really fun. Um, so uh, it's definitely out and about um, for people to find and have access to and, and the Instagram that you're sharing um, is a good is a good window into my world. If you scroll down a little more, you'll see um, a few of the birds that um, I've been noodling on lately, um, inspired by, again, all the all the activity near our house uh, of late. <laughs> I love this one with the beer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely cold water surfer, um, just kind of in his mood. Yeah, you can really tell you skate and surf and the muse. Um, and it looks like you have a show in Proof Lab in Mill Valley, right? You're showing your art um, there? Right now there's, yeah, there's art on the wall. I don't know if it's a show or a person, but um, that art is on the wall and it, it's, it's available for purchase. Um, it, it does a little to dress up and otherwise a glamorous wall at the shop, but um, incredible store, uh, great people, incredible vibe, uh, very community oriented. And I'm, I'm privileged um, that they uh, see enough in me to, to, to hang my, my art on their walls. Um, I, I, it's a badge of honor for me of all the places that I've been able to show. Yeah, if you're a, a Marin surfer or a San Francisco surfer, you generally drive right by at Ch Town Junction and they have a skate ramp inside their shop and those guys are really great with the community with surf rider with beast cleanups yep. and we did a screening with the Malloys. Uh, I helped make 180 south a long time ago now but we did a big screening and there are hundreds of people and there it was so fun. So yeah, if you definitely. are in Marin or Bay Area go to buy the proof lab buy a board. <laughs> Don't surf where I surf. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, you know support your local businesses and, and your local artists and see Kevin's work live. Um, you know, so tell me about why the single fin, 
you know. Yeah. Um, we're a longboarder. Uh, yeah, no, I have to give full disclosure. I, I probably uh, have no business self-identifying as a longboarder, although I really love longboarding. Um, I revere it. I think it has, like skateboarding, I think it has um, as much, if not more, to offer than than what we would maybe refer to as contemporary surfing. But um, given where I was raised and where I surf day in and day out, um, the kind of shortboard approach tends to make more sense. But I am enamored with longboarding, and um, and I try to do it whenever I can, and I'm trying to get better at it and pay credence to my Instagram handle. But where it came from. Um, was um, I was a history major, and 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 as is evidenced in my work, I I I, I like tongue in cheek wordplay, cleverness. Um, when I was growing up, uh, I guess when I was a, a teenager or early twenties, there was a there was a rock band called Single Gun Theory, which I think was. Um, a bit of a, a play on uh, not terribly not in terribly great taste but a play on the uh, conspiracy theories that surrounded John F Kennedy's assassination and i just thought it was very clever um, that the way they sort of took that over and it always stuck with me and when i got on instagram uh, for the first time i'd never been on facebook twitter still haven't uh, as you can tell by this um, technology challenged <laughs> session we're having but um, I first got on Instagram because I thought it was a photo editing app. I didn't realize that everything I was putting on there was being shared. And, um, and then uh, it was sort of confluent with, with me putting more of my art out. And I just thought I needed a, a handle and I thought it needed to be creative. And that just kind of came to mind. Um, but it's, it's actually worked because it really kind of encompasses all kinds of different things, fun, serious, and otherwise, um, it's reflective of, I think, of the general vibe of, of what I'm trying to do. Uh, well, I could definitely tell you the older you get, the longer your boards get. <laughs> yes, or thicker, <laughs> at least. Yeah. I still have like a, well, my longest, my shortest board is a 610, and I can only break it out in overhead waves because I can't get into the waves if <laughs> it's under overhead. Um, yeah, I haven't, uh, I haven't <laughs> given up. Uh, I, I still kind of now I'm kind of writing everything um, and probably need to get more focused. But um, yeah, you know, be, being in the ocean, uh, whether you're on a longboard, a shortboard, bodyboard, body surf, sailing, swimming, diving, fishing, um, it's 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 so restorative and it's such a profound place to be. And um, for me, it's it's uh, it's like my church, my gym. Um, my you know sort of just just my whole purpose at, at, at times i'm also very much um someone that's interested in the mountains and and, and the greater west uh, the united states um lifestyles ranching fishing um backpacking etc but ocean ocean tends to trump all well it looks like you're uh, inspired by coffee also yeah that's a fair, um, a fair uh, characterization. Um, certainly, uh, coffee tends to tends to um, generate creativity, and coffee probably has a, a a bit of a lopsided effect on me. It doesn't take much to get me going, and I think again, like um, I like to make expression of of mood. If you look at the skateboarder there on the lower left. Um, I'm on my phone, so I, it's hard for me to tell what we're looking at and what we're not, but where he's just staring at that uh, absurdly abrupt vertical wall, mm -hmm. you know, it's all about mood um, and, and um, perspective and coffee, you know, really uh, speaks to a lot of that. It drives a lot of that. I think coffee drinkers uh, tend to um, appreciate uh, kind of the ups and downs of life. Um, and so it's been just a medium that I've just enjoyed uh, kind of kidnapped and take hold of coffee cups and coffee drinking and then turned into um, various forms of expression, including the one that I did, um, which the foam on the coffee cup is uh, turned up into a wave and the tagline is froth. Uh, surfers like themselves when they're excited as frothing. 
I think that's an Australianism. And so we kind of and people have identified with that. Huh. Yeah, it's great. Well, your art, it does have a whimsical tone, but I think what you mean by, by pensive, because you do get a lot of that, the kind of the expressions or the kind of the faceless. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's I'm not like, meant to be, uh, it's not meant to be sad, but um, it, 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 to me, um, there's, there's a lot of joy in depth and in thinking. Um, I really like that one with the sea creature in the background of that um, person on the bottom of the ocean floor. Um, again, kind of like the opaque lenses of the goggles and the glasses, um, the bubbles coming up out of the people that are sunk in down on the ocean floor um, are sort of, um, you know, they, they kind of work as thought bubbles as well as just actual oxygen um, and all, all kind of trying to direct the person that's looking at the art to think about uh, things in maybe a different way or, or take things, you know, a little deeper, but at the same time, it's, it's silly and fun and, and charming, I hope, um, you know, little person with their fins and that, in that case, the sea creature looks almost as worried as the, as the diver might be. <laughs> so Pamela, you want to get in here and tell us about well, how'd you meet Kevin? And you brought him aboard the Art for Sharks. Yeah. And thank you. It's really cool art and a great guy. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. I have um, I have a couple of his prints. One's in my kitchen. And it's blue, called Blue Moon. I think that one's called the, mm -hmm. the one. It's just a moon and a wave. Um, well, Kevin is dear to me because I love his wife. And his family is special to me. His his oldest daughter um, was classmates with my son. So, I mean, they're really, we've been through it all. So it's just wonderful. So when we um, were looking for artists, for art, for sharks, um, we definitely, the criteria was um, the love of the ocean, you know, definitely um, love of sharks and definitely passion. We, that's a very important ingredient for our, our, the artists that we select. And Kevin has so much passion. I mean, this man is so special. He's not just a special artist. He's just a wonderful dad. He's a wonderful friend. He's one of those people that you just love. You meet Kevin and you love Kevin. He's one of those guys. So he had to be part of our team. Um, he contributes more than the 25%. Um, contribution that we ask of artists he just he goes above and beyond and we don't love him just for that we love him because he's a wonderful person and he's so inspired um and he shares our lifestyle he cares about the ocean he surfs he cares about the environment and that's what we look for um in our artists so he was just perfect and we invited him and um if he if he said no to me i would have not taken no for an answer that's that's just the way it would have been. So here he is, and he's permanently per, permanently part of our team. And I'm going to get him and his family out here to Hawaii when we do our big um, Art for Sharks event that's planned in the future sometime. And Beth is going to help me I know orchestrate that. And we're going to have a really great time with music. And we're going to talk about art. And we're going to get David to talk about uh, shark stewards and educate more people because not enough people know and realize what kind of an impact sharks have um, on humans. So that's what we're, co we're constantly trying to do. Oh, and the other thing is next month, we have um, the artist that we are going to do an interview with is uh, Stephanie Martin, and she's based in Santa Cruz. And she does really beautiful water etchings and um, etchings of sea animals and seabirds and you'll see her art on Art for Sharks as well. Just wanted to give you guys a little heads up on the next artist, but we hope you enjoyed Kevin and um, his stories. And um, you could find him. I'll let Kevin tell you where you could find his art. Um, yeah, thanks Pamela. And, and that's a lot of um, lavish compliments that I probably don't deserve, but I appreciate it. Um, and you you can find me at the Single Fin Theory. Uh, that's the website, that's the Instagram. Um, if you're not careful, I'll leave a sticker or two, uh, on your window at the car park at surf spots. 
Um, yeah, and, and if I could just maybe, um, I had one more quick thought I wanted to share in terms of um, kind of all things ocean conservation and, and, and reverence for the ocean. And that is something that's important to me as well as um, is access. And this is a bit of a shameless plug, but I'm gonna do it. Um, I work with a, closely with a group called Mewater Foundation. Um, they take kids from you know, predominantly inner city, disenfranchised neighborhoods, difficult backgrounds, uh, out to the beach, teach them to surf, spend the day, multiple days. Um, and I think it's incumbent on all of us who care um, to give as much exposure as possible to as many people as possible um, so that they can enjoy what we enjoy and hopefully also get invested in, in protecting it. So um, thanks thanks for that public service announcement. That's great, Kevin. Thank, thank, thank you. So what was that yeah, called again? That. Uh, it's Me Water. Me Water. All one word, Me Water Foundation. They okay. have a website, great group. Um, local local next level surfers, uh, Tim and Eddie that, that co-founded that and they work really hard and in all the right ways, um, quietly and effectively. So Kevin, I was wondering what is like a good piece of advice that you could give to all the you know aspiring artists out there that are looking to you know create work like you do? Right there. Oh gosh. Um, yeah. Just do it, I guess, right? Some, okay. Someone someone has that tagline. Um, but really, um, you know, everybody has their own voice. Don't be self-critical. Just, just, just go at it. Um, I'm not trained. I never went to, uh, if that's not self-evident, <laughs> I never went to school for art. Um, I had the benefit of being an only child. And, and when I wasn't outside romping around, I was inside drawing. So that didn't hurt. But um, it wasn't until late, later, later in life that I really started to focus on sharing my art and really being more intentional with it. And it's been a really fun journey for me. And I'm thrilled that, um, you know, that my, my work touches people and um, gets them excited or creates some enjoyment. So, yeah, I think for, for people that are trying to find their outlet, um, just, just go at it go at it like crazy, go at it like no one's looking. And um, if you're doing it for fun, uh, you'll have success. I think that's been another key factor for me. Um, you know, I have the benefit of like a day job. I, I came at this later. Um, so I didn't have to make any sacrifices in what I do or how I do it. Um, I do it what brings me joy and what I think others may enjoy. And I share it unabashedly. And um, that has proven to be a successful recipe, but it's one I appreciate that not, not everybody has immediate access to. Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah, just go after it. Good. Follow your passion. Like this young man, our newest artist, uh, Pamela, you wanna talk about Lorenzo? I'd love to talk about Lorenzo. Okay, so Lorenzo is six years old and have a look at his art. I mean, yeah. is he not the most talented? He's our youngest artist for Art Versharks. Sharks. Um, he's based in Maui. His parents are chefs. And his parents sent me his pictures, his, his drawings. And I said, what? Are you serious? And I mean, these are just a few. He, he's done many. So there he is. I asked um, permission if I could have a picture of him. And his parents said, of course. So he hammed it up for us. And he's obsessed with great white sharks. It's his thing. Look, if you read, great white sharks never sleep. They rest with no, no, what's it say? Half, Half brain. brain and, you know, great white sharks are, can weigh, you know, I, I can't read, my eyes are going, um, but he's, He's incredibly, incredibly in love with, with sharks. And um, I just think he's the cutest thing. And uh, my best friend, Buffy, the, the, she loves his drawings. And um, I got a whole classroom full of kids that drew sharks um, as well. And you guys are going to see them soon. And um, I'm going to get Buffy on here. She's, she's not aware of it yet, but she's going to put her on here because she is an amazing first grade teacher and that's where it starts. She's inspiring these kids 
in her classroom. And I mean, six-year-olds and one girl in her class, and I can tell you the story, she called me up and she told me that she read, um, she read to them what's going on with sharks. I think it's, uh, she read something, of, uh, a line from David's book and the reality of what's going on. And she, she was in tears. And what they did was they had to, you know, what they do with kids now is they all, obviously they calm them down and say, it's going to be okay. You know, we're going to, this is why we do this. We educate, we learn what, what humans actually do to sharks. Like she couldn't believe the shark finning thing. So the teachers got together and they decided let's walk her out. Let's, let's take her on a walk. So they had to take her out of the classroom, thanks to what we humans have done to sharks. This, this poor child, we had to take her out of the classroom and walk her around to shake off how upset she was. So when Buffy and I talk about it, we, were, we sort of, it's not funny, but we kind of laugh. And, and she tells me, please, Pamela, no, no bloody pictures. <laughs> wow. And I'm like, I would never do that to the kids because they are too young for that. Um, but it's a reality, and I think that it starts there. I think that if kids really learn um, young, it it ingrain it gets planted, it get, gets into their it it plants into their heart, and they grow up to do something about it. So, um, yeah, that's why my latest our latest posts have been focused on children because we're gearing up to share the classroom and the kids. Um, but meantime, I got a lot more art to share. I got more artists to introduce. I have one um, surprise artist that's coming. I won't tell you who it is. You'll just see it on Instagram. Um, but yeah, we love the kids. Um, and there's David's book. Um, I was, I love this book. It's it's not it's not a book for, for kids. It's a book for adults. Every adult should read this book. It should be sharks for adults. <laughs> But there are, there's no bloody pictures, no hacked so, off shark fins. Yeah. Uh, it shouldn't make yeah. a kid cry. It's just the, the cold hard facts, I guess, made her cry. Because it really is yeah. about science. But yeah. there is a conservation chapter in it. Um, it's yeah. on our website and Amazon. So thanks for the, the book plug. Uh, and I love having the kids. The more children's art. I mean, we actually we have a diversity of artists, including uh, this is Stephanie Martin's work here, right? She's who we'll be talking with next week. Um, but yeah, it's a, there's a, a real breadth of artists here, as you can tell, like some realism, uh, photography. We had Gary Rose in December, who has a lot of uh, photographs of hammerheads and, and uh, oceanic white tips and tigers. And he's donated the proceeds, like many of these artists have, some percentage or all to support shark stewards and we're very grateful and it's really fun to work with these artists around the globe from Australia um, all the way up here to North America and um, you know I, I have to I'm going to take a page out of your book Kevin because I think I'm just going to go jump off a mast or something and leave my hat out that sounds like a great fundraising uh, uh, story just jump in the water, do something crazy, and people will donate, especially in San Francisco, right? <laughs> um, we have a few people. Jeff Bjork is a friend of yours. You must be watching here on Facebook Live. Uh, yep. Jackson Escobel, Dave Cannon. So thanks for joining us live. Uh, this is Art for Sharks with Shark Stewards, and this is our third episode. We're going to do these monthly Right around World Oceans Day is our next uh, Art for Sharks. I think the 6th or so, June 8th is World Oceans Day, where we're going to be doing beach cleanups if you're in California and hopefully elsewhere. And not only clean the beach, but actually collect data so we can stop all this plastic coming into the ocean and poisoning our wildlife. Because we're about keeping wildlife in the wild, focusing on sharks, but really about ocean health. Um, I really want to thank artist Kevin Mursky. Kevin, I look forward to meeting you and hanging out, having a beer at Proof Lab, uh, getting some of your art. It looks so fun. You look super cool. This is really fun. Not your typical, you know, boring webinar lectures. Nah. nah. Um, so look, look for these. Uh, we do more scientific events, uh, more serious events on Endangered Species Day with scientists and conservation biologists and policymakers. And one thing that we do is not just talk, 
Shark Stewards Acts. And we have some campaigns with some actions that you can participate with uh, now to tell your Congress people to support the Shark Fin Sales Elimination Act, to uh, support the Drift Net Modernization Act that's killing a lot of uh, sharks and seabirds and marine mammals off the coast of California, as well as that plastic is going in the ocean. So stopping it at the, at the source and doing other actions, getting kids out, uh, supporting a, a healthy ocean through creativity, through passion, uh, and through living right. Uh, any last words, Kevin, or? Uh, my last words would be to Beth and to that school teacher and to any future artists, uh, you are under the, the, the power of Pamela Comstock and there's no saying no. Yeah. Which is thank awesome. You. No, I, I, in all seriousness, um, thank you again. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to contribute in my small way. Um, and, you know, sorry for, for not having my slideshow uh, on lock, but, I think we got there and uh, great conversation. I'm just really um, thrilled with what you guys are doing. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. This is beautiful. Thank you guys. And thanks to yeah. our new thanks, Hawaiian David. chapter. You're starting it. I'll be in the, the big island next week looking for oceanic white tips, hammerheads and mantas to document. And it's part of a film that we'll, we'll be working on, but also a campaign to save the ocean's most endangered sharks. So there's, there's actually, since the sharks are protected pretty well in Hawaii, we still have some there. So I'm, I can't go to Asia right now. There's too much quarantine, too much COVID, but I can go to Hawaii because it's part of America. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for tuning in to Facebook thanks, Live. We've got a lot of friends. Like Stacey Ann, who's been a volunteer. Dave Cannon, I don't know if you know him, Kevin. Uh, you've got people waving at Everyone you. Everyone knows Dave Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> He's a legend. <laughs> Time to heckle. You can heckle your friends live and they can't heckle back. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Justin, for thing. joining us and all the work you do. If you want to volunteer at Shark Stewards, you can go to that volunteer tab at sharkstewards.org. Of course, donations keep us going uh, and keep our work out there saving sharks. So we're going to sign off and see you again on the internet. Bye. All right, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Kevin.